this one customer may be the only reason we're still open. Mm. It's one of these meat eater stories. But <laughs> girl walks through the door, big smile on her face. And it was you know, clear that she, oh, I found a new vegan place. And I'm not exaggerating. As the guy walked through the door, I could read his lips. And he used several four-letter words as he walked through our door <laughs> under his breath. And this is how he ordered. Oh, I guess I'll try the burger. Mm. Knowing that he's going to hate it, right? Right. So they liked it. Mm. They came back seven nights in a row. Mm. About the fourth night, I was talking to them. And the guy goes, it pains me to tell you this, but this is among the best food I've ever had. It's Koya Webb, and welcome to Get Loved Up Podcast. Today, I'm with Ron Russell, head chef at Sun and owner of Sun Cafe, co-owner with Rebecca. And I have known Ron for over 12 years. It's been a long time. It's been a while. And I'm just so impressed with how he, no matter what, keeps this restaurant up and running. And not only that, is working on his second restaurant. So we're gonna sit down and talk today about how he gets loved up and really what it takes to be successful in something like owning a brick and mortar in a digital age. So Ron, hey. welcome. Great to see you, Koya. <laughs> oh Always my a goodness, oh my goodness. I just wanna start with what made you decide to open a restaurant? Uh, well, that's insanity is what <laughs> caused that to happen. Um, we're probably the only restaurant in LA that opened by accident. Mm. Um, we actually had food uh, line that we were selling to some of the health food stores and we needed a bigger kitchen. And so we looked for a kitchen, took like a year, found one. And then we noticed as once we opened that all this traffic was going by and we thought, well, maybe we should open a little cafe. And very quickly, the cafe started doing better than the food line, and the food line has since gone away. But the, the what was your food line? I don't think I knew about this. Well, we had raw products in uh, Whole Foods and Mothers and some of the health food stores in mm. Southern California, and uh, we had kale chips and some other things. And um, yeah, it just you know, it didn't really go that far. Uh, we were in a lot of stores, but it just wasn't hitting all cylinders. So mm. we opened the restaurant, and that immediately took off it right. very quickly started growing wow that's amazing yeah we used to grow at uh five percent per month wow. which is about a hundred percent a year right so i remember when you first started um my favorite thing was the hail kale salad <laughs> and it was just this huge i think it's a kale colossus actually it's called kale, kale, colossus. kale colossus now but, and yeah. it had everything in it, like bananas and raisins and all these things. It has five different sauces. It has um, a bunch of pizza-like toppings, red peppers and um, a chorizo and on and on, all the things that are on it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of funny how it came about because uh, at the old, so we started in a much smaller restaurant, now we have a bigger restaurant. But when we started, mm -hmm. the cooks would one up themselves when they were going on a break. So they'd make a salad this big and then this big and then this big and mm -hmm. and then we started going and they'd put everything on it and I'm like, this tastes pretty good. Like so we turned it into a, a recipe for the for the uh, restaurant. That's amazing. Yeah, Creation pretty funny. is amazing. And I know you work with Chef Rashid. Uh -huh, I know yeah. um, he had a line, like a line of products as mm -hmm. well. And I, I remember how hard it was in the beginning because he was telling me like, okay, like I have all these recipes and ideas, but really having a difficult time with that transition to a restaurant. Right. So what do you feel like is really what changed and made you successful as more successful as a restaurateur right. than having a, a line. Yeah, uh, Rashid's an incredibly creative chef mm -hmm. and um, uh, and we both made some of the recipes when we started. He was probably the, the did the most recipes. But um, what, what happens with a restaurant is it's a marathon. Mm -hmm. It's like there's so many moving parts to a restaurant. You just have to be just incredibly persistent and make sure the quality stays up and it consistency and 
make sure the customers are happy and make sure the service is good and make sure you're not out of stock of you know different things and currently we have over 250 ingredients that we stock for the restaurant wow and you can't have too many or else they spoil and you can't mm -hmm. have too few or else you run out of food right. so there's that a lot of people don't realize when you're starting a restaurant you're also a marketing firm mm -hmm. because people just don't generally find you you have to go out and find them right. so the first three years every week I went to two health clubs major health clubs mm -hmm. and sampled out 200 uh, samples every single week at both clubs so 400 samples a week for three years wow. and that got us a lot of customers um, probably I I would go back to the restaurant after sampling and I'd see four or five of the people I had just talked to. You know, they mm. came right over. So it definitely worked. And uh, so people don't realize how many different things you're running. You're running a, uh, you know, a manufacturing on the spot company, which is your cooks. Right. And, and, and then the front of house is a retail operation and a warehouse and a, and a marketing firm. It's, it's mm. a, a lot of hats. Wow, that's amazing. And what do you feel like, let's just say if someone was like, I want to open up a restaurant, what what are the three things that I need to do if I'm really interested right. in starting my own vegan restaurant? Right. Well. And vegan at that, so yes. it's not even the mainstream. Right. But what if I want to start my own vegan restaurant? Well, uh, so I do get a lot of people asking me mm -hmm. questions about that and, you know, say, can I, you know, take you to lunch and talk about it mm -hmm. most often what I see not always but sometimes people just have some good recipes and they mm -hmm. think that's enough that mm -hmm. is not enough right. um, the recipes is probably about 15 or 20 percent of your restaurant mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a lot of different skills or partners that handle the different skill sets you have to have good accounting skills because you're keeping track of a lot of different things and the money flow in a restaurant is very critical so you have to really pay attention to that you know you if you don't have these skills obviously you can learn up about skills mm -hmm. um, you have to have marketing skills you have to be able to get people interested in your restaurant and figure out a way that's unique to, to pull them in um, you have to be good at detail and I'm not overly good at detail certain mm -hmm. I see many things I have a I have a couple of very bizarre superpowers um, and I can see things I can walk into a business mm -hmm. and I can tell you fairly accurately how well they're doing and how much they pull in a year just by looking at the time of day and how many people are there and I do a quick calculation in my head and I give mm. you a pretty good accurate um, and I also can go into a room and tell you how many square feet it is wow. just by looking at it. And it's kind of observational skills I have. Mm -hmm. And um, that helps because I see the restaurant from a customer standpoint. Right. Uh, so I'm always noticing little things that maybe other people don't notice. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to just you know be really diligent in figuring out the whole thing and not just concentrate on one aspect of the business. And service right. is a whole other level of, <laughs> you know, finding the right people is really difficult. Um, it's taken us years to find the right people. And now I feel like our staff is the best it's ever been. It's mm. like we have probably the calmest kitchen in LA, wow. which is, a blessing mm -hmm. uh, because you know a lot of kitchens are very volatile mm -hmm. and so it's it's great when it runs smoothly and mm -hmm. and people aren't all at each other's throats and <laughs> yeah you know it's like so you and we've had you know some people that you know seem to like drama and that right. happens so yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are some of the things that you have to watch out for and skills you have to learn. Absolutely. And so veganism, yeah. I know that that's really important. You're not just running the vegan um, restaurant and Sun Cafe as yeah. a vegan restaurant, but you're actually, you've actually been vegan for how many years now? So I've been vegetarian for 43 years and mm -hmm. vegan for 21. Wow. Um, uh, I was in college mm -hmm. when I was a chef in a restaurant. And I was cooking like any other night, 50 pieces of meat on the grill. Wow. And this one night I was just staring at it. It was like mesmerizing and the, the blood was pouring out of it and all. And I was mm -hmm. like, nope, that's not 
meant for me. That's 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 an animal, and mm-hmm. it just kind of the light bulb went on for me, and I've never eaten meat once since that night. Wow. Um, so, um, and it also didn't hurt that the Beatles were all vegetarians at the time. <laughs> so that kind of like swayed me a little too. Um, mm. And then I spent you know, the next couple of years kind of learning why I, you know, I didn't really know why, I just kind of innately felt like this wasn't right. Right. And then I read about the ethics and the environmental impact of uh, animal production and uh, the health aspects and all that. So right. I studied for a long time after that too. Mm. And that's, I think that's really important that you have a why. Because if yeah. your why is like, oh, this thought it was cool and the Beatles yeah. were vegetarian, it doesn't last very long. No. But the fact that you did research, which is exactly what I did when I found out about it, I was like, okay, let me try this out. Oh, this is kind of nice. Right. But once I found out about the brutality that happens to produce that food yeah. on my plate, and once I found out the consumption and how much of our natural resources that we use in the production of putting that food on my plate, I had to make a decision of how I wanted to move forward and how I wanted to be when it comes to right. eating. So if someone does decide, you know what, I want to try this vegan thing. Sure. I want to. I want to try plant based. What are your suggestions and how they can be a healthy vegan? Because we right. all know there's a lot of vegans out there. Yeah. But not all of us are healthy. Yeah. So you can eat candy all day long and chips right? while you're a or- vegan, <laughs> but you're not going to be very healthy. Right. So. Um, yeah, it's definitely a process, and uh, one of the things I tell people, don't beat yourself up. You know, you're going to make mistakes the first couple of years. I mean, they hide meat, animal products in so many different products, it's hard sometimes to know exactly. Uh, nowadays, though, it's getting easier. There's a lot more products that put a little V on there so you know right. that it's vegan approved, kind of. So uh, back in the day, it wasn't that easy. Right. Um, uh, and almost, at least on the on the two coasts, mm-hmm. almost every restaurant has at least one vegan option. They kind of know what it is now, where right. they didn't used to even know what you were talking about. They'll say, "Oh, vegetarian," and you're yeah. like, "Well, not really." Well, they <laughs> wouldn't even know what vegetarian was back wow. in the day. I mean, you know, 40 years ago, they just look at you like. What? You know. <laughs> so you want a salad? Yeah, you want a salad. <laughs> That's all they knew was, oh, it must mean you want a salad. No, mm. um, I'm. I love salads, but I don't want them every 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 meal. Right. Um, so that's one thing is to not, you know. Realize you're on a, a learning journey mm-hmm. and uh, just spend a little time. There's so many great videos out there now. Um, you know, there's things like. Um, uh, Forks Over Knives mm-hmm. is a great one with a bunch of doctors giving you input. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's great doctors uh, as resources now. One of my favorites is Dr. Michael Greger. Mm-hmm. He has a website called uh, nutritionfacts.org, O-R-G. Um, I consider him the foremost nutritionist in the world. Mm-hmm. He just studies nutrition. He right. doesn't see patients. He just studies nutrition. He has over a thousand videos on every aspect of nutrition. He's a great resource. Um, uh, for, you know, there's lots of great cookbooks now. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got one coming out soon. Yes, (laughs) we can't wait for your cookbook because I do feel like you have the healthiest, good tasting vegan food out there. It's we really very work on that. It's very nutrient dense and flavorful. Yeah. And I think, because, you know, you can be good, but it's not really healthy. Right. But your food is healthy. Or it can be too healthy and it too doesn't healthy taste and it like doesn't anything. Taste good, but yeah. your, your, your food really massages both of those areas really nice. We work on that. Um, uh, both, uh, well, my business partner, Rebecca Smith, um, Ha, has a secret weapon that we use. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is actually what's uh, medically called a super taster. Mm-hmm. And she has more than twice as many taste buds as the average person. Wow. You can actually uh, test yourself. There's mm-hmm. there's uh, litmus paper that will show you if you are a super taster. If you're like really sensitive to hot stuff mm-hmm. or things, you may be a super taster. It's something, I forget what the percentage is, but a mm-hmm. couple of percent of the population has this kind of odd ability. And so she can taste things beyond what I can taste. Right. And she is very sensitive to taste. And uh, she, I think, is one of the main reasons we're still around is because she is very finicky about what goes on the menu, as we should be. Mm -hmm. And so she's always like, well, how do we take this up another level or another level in taste? And so we're always 
going a little further than than you know just making a special and throwing it on the menu it goes right. through incarnations and super tasting yeah that's super amazing tasting. i yeah. might be a super t- i'm definitely sensitive sensitive to heat yeah sensitive yeah. to heat and can taste the flavor in anything Maybe. some things are overpowering or too strong right. in dishes exactly. and it completely turns me off wow that's amazing and then also rebecca um well, we, we both decided the first rule we made when mm-hmm. we were sitting down before the restaurant was even first recipe created, mm-hmm. what are we trying to accomplish here? And the first rule was no one goes away feeling deprived for eating healthier. Mm. That is number one rule. We don't want to hear the, the last thing we want to hear. Well, for vegan food, that was good. No, we want people to go frickin' A. We want meat eaters to go, that is the best meal I've had this year or maybe in my lifetime. Right. And we've had that happen over and over again where sometimes meat eaters get dragged to our restaurants by vegan girlfriends or whatever, <laughs> but um, they don't want to be there. You can tell they're angry that they're there. Mm-hmm. And many, many, many times uh, we end up becoming their favorite restaurant. Mm. And that's always one of my favorite things that happens in the restaurant where right. the light bulb goes on like oh my gosh it doesn't have to taste boring you know mm-hmm. so we're all about lots of flavor i'd rather have it a little over seasoned than under seasoned kind of right. thing what are your i guess your top five i know but there's about seven but what are of the flavors mm-hmm. what are your top five that you use like if someone were to say i want to make vegan food at home i want to make it taste good and i know right. you do cooking classes right there right as well. i've done over 350 cooking 350 classes. cooking classes so i guess two things one what are your top three dishes that people just rave about and love okay and then two how can people create this at home what are those top five flavors you include okay well um uh, off our menu, mm-hmm. uh, our most popular dish is our nachos. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do something very unusual at, Re- at Sun Cafe that I don't think many restaurants, we're probably one or maybe two or three uh, of the restaurants do this. Mm-hmm. We make almost everything from scratch. Mm-hmm. And when I say that, I mean we make our own cheese, we make our own right. butter, we make our own mayo, we make our own chorizo out of mm-hmm. sunflower seeds, we make all our sauces, all our dressings. Um, so everything has been made within 24 hours of when you taste it. Mm-hmm. Um, so our nachos, um, the, only th- the only two things you have to have for nacho, well, three things. You have to have some form of chip. Mm-hmm. One of the ways we make a healthier one is we just cut jicama really thin. Right. And it's crunchy like a chip. It's not going to convince you it's a chip, but right. it's, it's a nice, it's fresh. You know, refreshing mm-hmm. chip. And uh, you have to have nacho cheese. Mm-hmm. And you have to have pico or salsa. Mm. And once you have those three ingredients, then you can get creative in whatever else you happen to have. Shredded right. vegetables, guacamole, vegan sour cream, mm. on and on, all the different things you can put on nachos. Uh, we put on chorizo and all, all these different things. But, um, but those are the three things you have to have. So once you learn how to make nacho cheese, you mm-hmm. can make your own nachos pretty easily. And I teach people how to make nacho cheese. Um, uh, and in fact, um, we've got a cooking series that we worked mm-hmm. on and, um, and it's in that. So, right. The online course. So the nachos yeah. in the online course. The nachos okay. is in the online well, we're gonna course. Link a, we're going to put a link for that. So <laughs> that was a can... shameless plug. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> that it's all about letting people know who you are and where yeah. they can really benefit from the information that you have and right. share um, quite willingly. So, so what are your so other... the other ones? Yeah. Um, our lasagna is really good. And one mm-hmm. of the things that makes it really unusual, we use um, gluten-free brown rice noodles. But one of the really key ingredients that I don't think many uh, lasagnas do is we have the traditional you know, marinara and the ricotta mm-hmm. cheese that we make in the restaurant. But we also add a layer of uh, walnut pesto. Mm. And that just gives an extra flavor burst mm-hmm. in there. So I love that's, a, that's a really, <laughs> and, and just pesto is magical. Oh, pesto is amazing. So um, yeah, so that's one of our most popular. Our kale colossus salad is really popular. Mm-hmm. It's massage kale because you want happy kale when you eat it. And, and we <laughs> massage it with our ranch dressing, which is made out of sunflower seeds. Mm-hmm. And then we uh, put all these different toppings. It's almost like pizza toppings on a salad. Mm-hmm. So we put uh, four different sauces on there. We put on uh, marinated red peppers and mushrooms and 
uh, even raisins and banana. And I know that sounds bizarre. And no, it's good. Put, I love. It. It's like a water. Yeah, we salad. put pico de gallo on and there. A and pizza. We put we put uh, <laughs> chorizo. Oh I mean, we put a lot of stuff on there. Right. And so there's just every bite has a different flavor to it. Mm -hmm. So it it's an interesting salad. So those are some of the most popular things on the menu. As far as flavorings go, it's really hard to say. It depends, you know, what you're making. But, I mean, the things I don't think I could live without, mm -hmm. garlic, mm. onion, mm. cumin. <laughs> cumin is one of my favorite seasonings because it's a little on the subtle side, but right. very flavorful. It's not like it doesn't, yeah, as well. it doesn't disappear, but it's like, like when you taste cinnamon, the second mm. you taste it, you know, it's cinnamon all the way through your mouth, it's cinnamon right. all the way to the end. With cumin, it's like, I often don't recognize it right away when I bite something that has cumin in it. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm, it tastes flavorful, but I can't tell what it is. And it's mm -hmm. not till like later in the bite that it kind of seeps into your, um, you know, receptors or something right. that I start tasting it. Mm -hmm. So that's one that I would have a hard time going without. And onions are just magical at flavor th flavoring everything and uh, as is garlic. So, I mean, those are some of the things I, use the most in the mm. kitchen nice. ginger mm -hmm. you know you know uh, and just fresh herbs right. dill uh, rosemary mm. uh, thyme Love all those. of those uh. can add so much to a dish right. um, and eating fresh in general mm -hmm. um, you know Americans are used to everything pre prepared right. and that's one of the least healthy things you can do. You mm -hmm. want everything as close to nature as you can get it. Right. So lots and lots of fresh vegetables and fruits, uh, fresh herbs, uh, just that alone will make your mm. food be a lot more interesting. It just sounds good. My mouth is watering. And yeah. lemon juice. Oh, lemon, lemon juice. juice and vinegars. Um, good preservatives. Uh, so yeah, and also you'll often hear uh, chefs talk about acid, you know, mm -hmm. needs more or less acid. Well, mm -hmm. they're talking about two things. They're talking right. about citrus, uh, either lemon or lime, or they're talking about uh, vinegar. Those mm -hmm. are the acids that they're always talking about. So they help offset and pump up the flavor of other things. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot make Mediterranean, which we have all heard Mediterranean diet is so healthy, you cannot make Mediterranean food without lemon juice. Mm. Uh, I'm, I don't think I know of a single Greek dish that doesn't have lemon juice in it. Mm. You can't make uh, you know, Middle Eastern food without lemon juice. You can't make right. Moroccan food or Italian food without lemon juice. So lemon juice is another one that mm. helps burst the flavors higher. Right. And it's got great flavor itself too. But mm, anyway, amazing. those are some quick little tips. Thank you for sharing those. And do you feel like there was ever a point where you're like, this is not going to work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> every day? No. <laughs> um, the first year. Mm -hmm. The first year, both of us were working 17, 15, 16, 17 hours every day. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a day off for a year. 365 wow. days. Worked every day all. I would get home at like 10 at night. Mm -hmm. So tired, I, I didn't even take off my clothes most of the time. I would just flop on the bed, wake up six hours later, take mm. a shower and go back to work. And, you know, it was like about six months into it, it's like, you know, I really could feel my health was going down too. Cause right. I, I, I was just, that's all I was doing. And- Were you eating? I was eating, but not as well as I could have. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you just grab whatever you could cause you had so little time, right. you know. you. And we were in a healthy restaurant, but you know, still you would just like, oh, well, this is made, I'll just grab this. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that was really tough. Mm -hmm. the, this one customer may be the only reason we're still open. Mm -hmm. um, this, uh, it's one of these meat eater stories, but <laughs> girl walks through the door, big smile on her face. And it was you know, clear that she, oh, I found a new vegan place. And I'm not exaggerating. As the guy walked through the door, I could read his lips. And he used several four-letter words as he walked through our door <laughs> under his breath. And this is how he ordered. Oh, I guess I'll try the burger. Mm. Knowing that he's going to hate it, right? Right. So they liked it. Mm. They came back seven nights in a row. Mm. 
about the fourth night I was talking to them and the guy goes, it pains me to tell you this, but this is among the best food I've ever had. And mm-hmm. the reason it pains me to tell you, I own a chain of Italian restaurants, uh, of Italian restaurants on the East Coast, and I didn't think any vegan restaurant could come close to what I'm doing, but you do. Wow. That was enough to go, we're doing something special here. This is special. That has to feel good to yeah. hear, especially a person who's not vegan. That's it. You know, sure, the vegans are going to love you, but mm-hmm. like the meat eater that doesn't want to be there is forced to tell you how right. good it is. That that got me through a lot of hard nights. They gave you some like, confidence. And, and, and just like we're doing something special. We yeah. have to make it work. There's mm-hmm. got to be a way to make it work. And, and then after the first year, it started, you know, mm-hmm getting a little easier and, and we started doing pretty well. But uh, boy, that first year was tough. Mm. Yeah. And now you're working on the second restaurant. Yeah, well, just real quickly. So we were in this very small, we started with 20 seats, mm-hmm. then 32 seats. Mm-hmm. And then we, five years ago, moved to a 110 seat restaurant right. where we have three patios and, you know, beautiful place. Um, and then we've been there five years and we just found a place in Santa Monica. Mm. And it's huge. It mm. seats over 200 people, has a parking lot. If you know Santa Monica, you know that's a miracle. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, it seats, it seats six, uh, the, the parking lot has 60 spaces in it, which is uh, wow. unheard of in that part of town. Uh, so we're really excited uh, about that. And we've had for 10 years, mm-hmm. a lot of people on that side of town say, you know, I just can't get over to your place. It's 20 right. miles and traffic, it's an hour. Mm. I just love your place, but I can't get over there. You know, so please open on the west side. We've heard that for years and now we're gonna be able to. That's amazing, Yeah, that's amazing. And so what are some of your challenges now? Are they new challenges? Are they some of the similar challenges? Well, um, the, of course, always your, in my opinion, your biggest challenge is always your employees, mm-hmm. finding the right people. Right. Um, it's and it's at least I haven't figured out a way to make it an exact science. You know, mm. it's like you think somebody's going to be great, and mm-hmm. you know they, you know, disappoint you, or somebody, you know, maybe well let's give them a try, and they be a rock star. So you never always know. Mm-hmm. Um, you do your best to judge, but right. it's never you know that exact. And we're going to be hiring 90 plus people. Wow. That's a lot to deal with. Are there any specific personality traits or specific things that you look for for this particular restaurant or in general? In general, uh, so the, there's two different parts, primarily two different parts to the restaurant. The mm-hmm. back of house, which is the, the cooks, mm-hmm. and you want mellow people. You mm. want people. You want people also that tend to stick on a job a while, because mm. you'll get lots of recipe re, <laughs> resumes where you know they work three months at each place for two years. So right. they've they've had eight employers in two years. Like, mm. why am why are they going to stay at my place? You know, and by you don't even make any money from them the first three months. Mm-hmm. You know, they're losing you money because they're making mistakes and learning. Right. So you need somebody to stay at least a year with you or else it's not worth it. Right. Um, so that's one thing uh, I look for, especially in the back of house, which tend to be a little more uh, turnover than the front of house. We've been really lucky with our our waiters and hosts and whatnot. I think the, the shortest uh, time period anyone's been with us is two years. And wow. most of them have been three to seven years. That's amazing. Uh, they just stay. Uh, they they love working there, and uh, we try and make it, you know, as it's work, but we try and make it as fun as we can. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's going to be the challenge: is finding all the right people. We are bringing some of the people from the uh, the current space over because mm-hmm. they live on that part of town. So that'll that'll be at least a good base, and they can help train people and whatnot. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. So what do you feel like? you know being in being such a long-term vegan mm-hmm. and things like that and people of course they can come to the restaurant but when they try to do it at home what are some of the things you should je- suggest for people who are trying to you know say hey i want to be plant-based sure. vegan at home like what can right. i do so a couple of things uh, just logistically i tell people one of them is find 10 recipes that take 15 minutes or less. And that's a general rule that you always want to find 
quick recipes. Because mm-hmm. when I started out, I didn't know that rule. Right. And I would, oh, this recipe sounds good. And I'd be, you know, 45 <laughs> minutes into it and still not even close to done. It's like, right. oh my gosh, what have I got myself into? So <laughs> find quick, easy recipes. Right. Uh, uh, there's a decent number of vegan cookbooks now that are mm-hmm. that are geared to that, right. um, and you can make things super tasty. That's what I do in in my cooking classes and in the cookbook I'm working on. Most of them are 15 minutes or less. Mm-hmm. Um, I I look for ways to take out steps, look right. look take out ingredients, and still have a lot of flavor to it. So uh, look for those recipes and. The way you'll use them, it's not like you're going to make only those 10 recipes. But what I found in my own life is you'd get home from work, you're tired, Mm -hmm. you don't know what to make, and you're looking through cookbooks and you're trying to find something, and it's too late to be looking through cookbooks at that point. And on top of that, um, you... You just need something quick and easy so you don't have to think about it. Now, that's, mm-hmm. like I say, not going to be the only thing you're going to do. Mm-hmm. But on those many nights where you're just too tired to think about it, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I love that uh, creamy spinach soup, mm-hmm. and it only takes five minutes. Right. Like I, I make a soup with avocado, a bunch of spinach, and uh, herbs and spices, and it mm-hmm. tastes great, and it's literally five minutes in a blender. And you're done. So that's the kind of thing you want to look for and build up the ones that you really like. Right. Uh, that's one tip. Um, for making it yourself, um, fortunately now there's so many good YouTube videos too. Mm-hmm. You know, so you can see does it sound like your flavors, um, and and kind of learn what your flavors are. You may not even know at this point. Yeah, but like, I know I don't like onions. <laughs> <laughs> so when you mentioned that, that, I was like, everything without onions. Yeah. I think it's the sensitive taste. They right. seem to overpower. Sure. I can have onion flavor, mm-hmm. and I can have really sauteed right. well onions, but if they're, they're raw and close they're powerful, to raw, yeah. they just, to me, they just take over the dish, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And in raw food, you see that way too often. Mm-hmm. Both garlic and onion, if you're eating a, a raw food items, mm-hmm. uh, tend to be too much of those right. because there's i don't know what the, probably a magnitude of 10 times more powerful if they're raw compared mm. to when they're cooked i mean if you think about cooking garlic you've probably had baked garlic where you put it on bread right. it's not even that strong mm-hmm. you know you're eating like three cloves at a time if you ate three raw cloves you'd oh be like goodness. on the floor <laughs> like get this out of me uh so um yeah learn what flavors you enjoy mm-hmm. um obviously farmers markets or there's a lot of uh, I think um, just straight ahead stores now um, that are carrying a lot more organic products now Mm -hmm. their produce has gotten way better because it's become a more popular thing so uh, just a regular grocery store I find has some really good produce now Um, I tend to uh, eat a ton of greens. Uh, one of my rules is I eat a pound of leafy greens a day. Mm. Uh, leafy greens, I believe, are the most healthy thing you can eat. So I always make sure I get enough of them, usually in a smoothie and a and a salad. But also, everything I make, I try and throw in a handful of what I call the neutral greens, the mm. greens that don't have too much flavor, like spinach and chard. And even kale doesn't have too much flavor and throw it into the stir fry throw it into the casserole because right. you don't even notice it and you're going to get a ton of nutrients from mm-hmm. that a lot of fiber all the these amazing benefits of leafy greens so um and you know so you go to the farmer's market and you get greens for the week and you know make sure you eat just a lot of them um those are a few of the and what about it. water? I know some people carry around that gallon of water a day. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's important? And- um, it depends on what the rest of your diet's like. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that, I know people that eat tons of fruit. You know, mm-hmm. they'll have 12 portions of fruit a day. Right. Well, they don't need water as much because fruit has a lot of water kind of built into it. Mm-hmm. But if you're eating junk food or, or fast food or, or even vegan food, but, you know, that's uh, cooked you do need more water so you know you have to kind of gauge and also you hear this a lot listen Mm -hmm. to your body Mm -hmm. but i don't think anybody knows even what that means Mm -hmm. and so what i tell people in my cooking classes is 
So people in America think it's normal to need three tums after a meal, mm. to have acid reflux, to have burping, to have flatulence, right. uh, to have constipation. They think that's normal. No, mm -hmm. your body is screaming at you, mm -hmm. take care of me. So you shouldn't have any of those things when you eat and you should be energized, not tired at the end of the right. meal. So, you know, literally anything that your body is telling you is slowing it down or is giving you some kind of feedback, mm -hmm. try and listen to it and mm -hmm. find what the culprit is. Right. Um, often it's too much acidity in our diets, mm -hmm. uh, soft drinks are just horrible on the, your gut stomach i mean they right. they they we have flora in our in our gut that mm -hmm. helps us digest things and soft drinks and sugar especially just kill that right. and then that's when you get flatulence and burping and these things so your your stomach is 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 in crisis mm -hmm. um so uh people don't realize they're essentially poisoning themselves three times a day every time they eat it's a new crisis to to the the system it's going right. what are you doing to me and you know uh, so try and find what are, is causing that um like i say leafy greens cures almost everything mm. um eating less meat uh or ideally vegan uh uh, uh no fried food if you can help it i mean even I french fries now I say that, but I do cheat. <laughs> I do cheat, but I know that it's what you do most of the time. Right. Now, if you're gonna eat fried food at every meal, right. you're gonna have serious problems. Mm -hmm. But if you cheat once a week, you know, mm -hmm. it's not the end I of like the world. I like to call it indulging. Oh, there you go. Indulging I like instead that. of That's... cheating. I'm not cheating, I'm indulging That's because right. I allow myself freedom. That's so. a good one. So I, I can like indulge it. a couple yeah. times a week. Exactly. Okay. All right, awesome. So let's kind of dive into relationships because relationships with a family mm -hmm. that's not vegan is not always easy with a partner. So can you right. kind of speak about some of your personal relationships <laughs> and how being oh boy. vegan? <laughs> I um, mean, come on, we got to get to the good stuff. Oh All right, we're vegan now. So, well, back <laughs> in the day, my mother's gone now, but back mm -hmm. in the day, she was pretty good about being vegan around me not a hundred percent but like she she mostly ate vegan around me right. so uh, she was respectful of it mm -hmm. um my grandmother was funny because she was resistant to it and then i started taking her to the hair krishna temple which had a had a restaurant in it and she ended up falling in love with their food mm -hmm. so i think part of it is make sure you take them to the right restaurant first like your family or your your significant other or your friends, make sure you go to the one that's really appeals to everybody, not just vegans. Because there are those that are vegan that are for vegans kind of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like they're just a little too healthy or a little too, you know, funky. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but now certainly, like I say, on the coast, the East Coast, the West Coast has so many vegan option restaurants now. Uh, even the, the places that aren't vegan, uh, for instance, I was in Las Vegas recently mm -hmm. and I went to Hell's Kitchen, which I was mm. thinking somebody wanted to go there. <laughs> I was like, OK, whatever. They'll have something. I can I can have a salad. Right. I was shocked. They had a separate vegan menu with 12 entrees on it. Wow. I was like, what the heck? I'm Gordon, impressed. And Gordon Ramsay is historically you know, very anti-vegan. Right. But the last year, he is all about vegan. He's been talking it up. Mm. It's pretty incredible. Like I gotta even, check that out. <laughs> even he is into it now. And he just told off Piers Morgan, the uh, uh, talk show host, that like, you gotta get with it. You know, people are gonna turn vegan and we gotta respect that. And mm. I mean, he was like standing up wow. for vegans. It was pretty That's cool. That's amazing. So it's getting a lot easier. Right. So that's good to see. Mm -hmm. And what about like significant others? Like, does it matter? That's a hard thing. For me, it uh -huh. does. Uh -huh. I know others that are perfectly fine and have great relationships and they just, mm -hmm. you know, keep it kind of separate. And for me, it's too big a part of who I am. Right. So I know for me, I need somebody that's at least close mm -hmm. to vegan, even if they're not fully vegan. They, they get it they eat that way most of the time. Mm -hmm. They're respectful not to eat in front of me. Uh, mm -hmm. 
um, but ideally a vegan is, mm -hmm. is ideally one of, you know, mm. so, uh, pretty much I've only dated vegetarian vegans, long-term relationships for gosh, I don't know, more than 20 years. Wow. Uh, it just hasn't worked with other people. Right. Yeah. And what do you think about like in the news lately, you know, we have to go over it. All these people who are like, okay, I'm vegan now. I'm not vegan. Yeah. Like, and, and what do you, what do you have to say for them? What is that? How does that affect you? If it, if it, if it does or does it does. I mean, I, I love that veganism is growing very quickly. Um, I, I've seen stats where it's grown hundreds of percent just in the last five years, which is very exciting because for the first 20 years I was veg, you didn't see much movement. Right. Now I'm really seeing it. You're seeing these documentaries come out on mm -hmm. Netflix and it's very exciting. Um, the people that you know, are vegan or, you know, like social influencers who, you know, mm -hmm. promote veganism and then find out that they're eating some animal product. I'm a little different. I mean, ideally, I'd like them not to. Right. But but I think we're too quick to be critical of other people. It's like mm -hmm. everybody has their path. And, and my guess is the people that are, you know, a lot of them will come back to it, you mm -hmm. know. Um, uh, you know, some of them have been friends of mine and mm -hmm. I've known and it's like, I'm not going to beat them up just because they've they've made that decision to eat some fish or some eggs or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it's like if they're doing, you know, and a lot of the ones I, I know that have gone back to eating some animal products aren't eating it all the time. It's like, right. why am I going to beat them up? Because they're they're still better than 95 percent of the population mm -hmm. who's just heating you know bacon at every meal right. you know so it's like i think we need to lighten up and let them find their path and i think they'll come back to it as you know mm -hmm. gradually i i think veganism is is here to stay i think mm -hmm. it's going to be a growing movement it shows every sign that it's gonna you know become a huge thing and there are many reasons why it has to right. Number one, we can't support that many animals. If everyone ate meat at every meal, literally there would be famine everywhere mm -hmm. in, on Earth right. because there's just not enough room to raise that many animals. Right. Uh, not to mention what it does to the environment, the number one cause of water pollution, number one cause of water usage, the number mm -hmm. one cause of dead zones in the um, the ocean, uh, number one cause of uh, methane gas in, in the atmosphere, which you know is part of the greenhouse gas. Um, that being said, I'm very hopeful. I, I, I know a lot of green people that are so you know concerned about the world as we should be, right. but I'm very optimistic. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why I'm optimistic for two main reasons. Number one, veganism is growing very quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's going to help reverse a lot of negative effects. And as long as that trend continues, I think we're on a great path. Number two, um, I think fossil fuel is essentially done. Mm. It's still huge, but um, if you've heard of the Moore's curve on uh, computers, meaning that every year and a half, computers get twice as fast and half as big. That's been going on for years and years, mm -hmm. decades. Uh, the same curve or a similar curve is going on with solar power. Wow. So uh, every two and a half years, the cost drops 50%. Mm. So in 10 years, solar will be 80 to 90% cheaper than it is now. It's already essentially equivalent to oil in many mm -hmm. ways as far as pricing. Right. But think about when it'll be 90% cheaper than oil. Wow. Who will want oil? Right. It's just going to be a natural thing it's like why would I want oil it's going to cost me five times ten times as much right so so we're on some very good paths mm -hmm. um so as long as those trends continue I'm pretty optimistic that we're gonna escape relatively unharmed and people mm -hmm. also the news is geared for fear right um if you ask most people are things getting better or worse I think most people would say worse mm -hmm. And yet every indicator on earth, not everyone, most of the <laughs> indicators, I, I shouldn't say that inclusive, but almost all of them mm -hmm. are getting positive. Right. Crime is down. Poverty is drastically down. Mm -hmm. In the last 20 years, poverty has dropped 90% in the world. 
Mm. Where is that news? You never mm -hmm. hear that news. Right. Like and in do China. And you attribute that to veganism? It's partly veganism. It's partly capitalism. I know that's a dirty word, but mm -hmm. if you think about it, when when just China, let's just take China for a second. So in the 1920s, Hong Kong and China were equally poverty stricken. Mm. Hong Kong was allowed to be com uh, to be um, uh, capitalists, right. and, and and China remained communist, mm -hmm. uh, and and China remained utterly poor, and Hong Kong became one of the wealthiest centers in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and then in 1990s, China, even though they didn't give up communism, mm -hmm. they let their people be capitalists. You can start a business and so on. What happened 25 years later mm -hmm. um, of 1 billion Chinese people, uh, 950 million were in poverty 27 years ago, mm -hmm. and, and now only 10% are. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's so much improvement going on in the world. And yeah, we have a long way to go, but it's going the right way. And I just, I hate that the news always portrays everything is about to, you know, blow up in our face. The negative. We need to, we need to, you know, we need to be vigilant, but there's a lot of great stuff mm -hmm. happening. It's almost like we need to practice world gratitude, like what's going yeah. right in the world instead of just focusing on everything going wrong. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, you know, we still have too much racism, but compared mm -hmm. to 50 years ago, compared mm -hmm. to 100 years ago, we're in the right direction. We're not going the wrong I feel like a lot direction. of it that we realize now has just been hidden. And they're like yes. microaggressions. And it's like Absolutely. people really didn't see it as much because it wasn't as blatant. But I feel like with, you know, Trump becoming president, it was like, boom. It's like you can it's see it. It's a magnifying it. glass of, and of seeing it all. Sometimes I feel like you have to, you know, to heal it, you have to reveal it. And now yeah. that it's being revealed, we can talk about those women issues. Right. We can talk about yes. the racism. We can really have those conversations. Where we didn't Instead in of just ignoring it and pretending we, like it's gone. 100 years, we ignored right. it. Right, we And so it. it's out in the open now, exactly. and that's how you start to cure it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people are being shamed that are, as they should be, that are that are racist. So mm -hmm. that's a good trend. And, I, and you look at millennials. Mm -hmm. Compare them to people in their 60s, 70s. 70s. Mm -hmm. They have so much less racism, I feel, mm -hmm. that at least, you know, the ones I come in contact mm -hmm. with. You know, it's like they wouldn't even think of it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, so I just love I that. I feel like some people are unconscious, right? Sure. And now people are realizing like, oh, wait a minute. I said that and that's a racist thing to say yeah. or that is i thought that and i feel like people are having the conversation self-examination exactly yes. so now we become aware and then the healing can start and i feel like it's so good because for so many years it was just like oh that's not happening it's yeah. over and then the band-aid was stripped off and it's right. like yes yeah. it is happening yeah. it is here let's talk about it but it's getting yeah. it's going the right direction though because we're having the conversation because we're opening up yeah. to it and we don't want to have it mm -hmm. and maybe there was some fostering there but now right. you know, we're self-examining like well can i be better kind of mm -hmm. thing um also um you know everyone's got a camera now everyone's right. had a, has a video camera mm -hmm. so where we didn't see a lot of these things you know 40 years ago mm -hmm. now we see every instance because someone's filming it mm -hmm. so it seems like it it's greater but it really isn't mm -hmm. uh, not that it should there should be any of it but mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's like it's it's going in the right direction and and that's what i'm happy to it see it can't be i think people are coming out of hiding and yes. people are being caught as well yeah. like well we got it on camera we yeah. got it on video so you can't really deny it yeah. and i feel like that is so good and even with with the vegan movement is just like we have scientific evidence and proof that Tons eating a plant-based diet can not only help heal these life-threatening diseases but can also help you achieve optimal health Absolutely, and i think like that is the start of people moving in the right direction yeah it, it blows me away that I still hear people, oh, can you be healthy on a vegan diet? Mm -hmm. Like, no, you can't be healthy on a meat diet is, <laughs> is what you should be asking because um, there is so much evidence now. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that has been proven to reverse heart disease, mm -hmm. only thing is a vegan diet. Mm -hmm. A low-fat vegan diet. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Ornish proved this in the mm -hmm. 80s. He has a medical clinic at not some funky little place. It's UCLA Medical Center. He right. has his clinic. And um, 
we're the restaurant he sends his patients to because we follow mm. his protocols. Mm -hmm. And um, it just is amazing. Uh, Dr. Katz at Yale University, Dr. Mm -hmm. David Katz, estimates that 80% of the people that die of the chronic diseases, heart disease, cancer, stroke, and diabetes, do so needlessly. 80%, mm -hmm. four out of five people chose lifestyles that gave them those diseases. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, they can all be reversed, including cancer can often be reversed by improving diet and so on. Right. Um, uh, doctor, uh, I know Dr. Uh, Gregor, who I mentioned earlier, is coming out with a book on uh, cancer protocol mm. uh, to how to reverse cancer. So I'm excited to see that. But um, I've seen personally so many people that have overcome heart disease and diabetes, especially just by changing their diet. Right. And, uh, me too. And it's amazing to me that it's not better known and that doctors still don't know, most mm. of them. There's, there's a, thankfully, there's a growing movement uh, called lifestyle medicine now mm. where a lot of these doctors are treating with diet and exercise and so on. It's exciting to finally see, you know, medical professionals uh, getting that information because they've just not been taught that. Right. It's not their fault. They're just there's no information in medical school about it and that needs to change Absolutely. you know it's like uh, it's it, there's so many studies that show this to be the case mm -hmm. so yeah change is coming change yeah, is happening. change is happening so one question i like to ask every guest is how do you get loved up meaning how do you love yourself how do you love others and how do you love the planet oh my gosh <laughs> deep questions here um so Having a restaurant, it's difficult sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I get up very early in the morning, uh, usually around 4 a.m., mm -hmm. partly because there's no distractions at that time of day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not getting phone calls yet. Uh, I'm not getting, you know, oh my gosh, the uh, ice machine is out, you know, right. come over and save us. Um, um, so I, I get some time to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I use a couple of Tony Robbins things. Uh, mm -hmm. He spends three minutes a day being thankful. Mm -hmm. And I try and get into that habit where it's like, as tough as things are sometimes, mm -hmm. it's like we have it so well. Think right. of how people lived 100 years ago. Everyone was in poverty. Everyone on earth, essentially. I mean, we live better than the, the highest kings and queens did 200 years ago, mm. you know, mm -hmm. because of the you know, the facilities we have and the, the tools we have, like cell phones and all. Right. We just have so much. And um, so that's a big part of it. Um, uh, I do meditate. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to clear my mind. A lot of creativity comes in when you meditate, I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you brush How out. How long do you meditate? Not as much as I would like to probably mm -hmm. only 15 minutes a day which is not I enough that's amazing like i used to do shown four hours a day 15 to 20 minutes yeah. in the morning and in the yeah. evening is like the most beneficial right mm -hmm. i used to do a lot more meditation wow. though but and you felt like it was more the longer you went the more beneficial it was uh, there's different reasons to do at different lengths of time but mm -hmm. um but yeah just clearing your mind in general yeah. even if it's just you know envisioning being on a on a mountaintop with a mm. babbling brook going by you and really immerse yourself in the sound and the wind and feeling the grass in your toes and just mentally mm -hmm. can really just relax you and it just clear you. It makes me feel good when you say that. I'm like, <laughs> grass, toes in the grass, I'm feeling it. Nice. Uh, I have a, a friend that um, has anxiety attacks, mm. and sometimes he's in a real panic, and he calls me. He says, you know, help me, and, and that's what I do. I take him to, you know, really listen to that brook and listen to the sounds it makes as it's hitting the rocks and feel your toes in that water. And, you know, you just you just – go away you get mm -hmm. away from your problems kind right. of so to speak uh, i do work out mm -hmm. um uh, not long though uh i know some people that work out so many hours a day <laughs> I, I maybe half an hour and then a couple of two to four minute little things during the day just to kind of break it up mm -hmm. um 
but that is a big thing for me. I love movies, so you know, I, mm-hmm. I often you know get a little escape in a movie. What was your last movie that you watched? Oh gosh, what was the last one I watched? I can't even think. Um, I've kind of gotten bored with the uh, the superhero movies. <laughs> like I'm ready for some some real stuff. I can tell you some of my favorite films of all time. Groundhog Day, okay. I've seen probably a dozen times. Mm-hmm. I think it's one of the greatest movies ever. So well written. I, I've been a writer for many years. I've written, mm-hmm. I have a published novel. I've written a bunch of screenplays. I used to write for uh, cartoonists and I've written for the LA Times and all sorts of stuff. Um, that is one of the best written screenplays ever. It's so brilliant. Um, I love um, Shawshank Redemption and um, uh, lots of comedies. Uh, um, love some old stuff like Tootsie, where Dustin Hoffman becomes a woman, which is <laughs> really insightful, I thought. And then um, uh, just fun movies like Galaxy Quest, where they're spoofing kind of uh, Star Trek conventions. Mm. Um, I don't know, just uh, escapist movies, uh, fun stuff. And how do you love others? I guess through your food or? Well, I mean, a couple of the, my favorite things to do at the restaurant are mm-hmm. give my cooking classes because I get direct connection with people mm-hmm. and I've had p- some people uh, in my cooking classes that have been there over a year. They've wow. gone to every, virtually every class for a mm-hmm. year. Um, and so I get that connection with them and see growth. That's an exciting thing for me to see, you know, helping somebody and see them grow um, and get healthy again. Um, and then at the restaurant, you know, I've made a lot of great friends just mm-hmm. from, you know, we have the in common, the, the food, right. and then often find we have other things in common. So that's always fun. Um, uh, um, and then the world. Yeah. How do you? The world. Um, <laughs> oh, I love up the world. <laughs> well, I mean, there's nothing you can do that's more important to the earth than turning vegan. Mm. There's nothing. You could stop driving and live in a tent and it wouldn't do as much as if you gave up meat Mm -hmm. as far as cleaning up the world. So people worry about like, oh, I'm driving or whatever. Recycling. Yeah, (laughs) that's not one tenth as important as giving up meat because meat, uh, each pound of meat is somewhere between 2,500 and 5,000 gallons of water got used mm-hmm. to create that meat right. um, and then all the water pollution that that caused mm-hmm. and and uh, on and on and on uh, the destruction um, and if you see you know pictures and videos of these factory farms you you know in these states where they have pig farming they take the cesspool from the pigs and they blow it into the air to get rid of it like imagine what the you know eating all that feces in the air is doing to the people that live near that, you know, mm. factory farm. It's just insane what right. we allow people to do. So, um, you know, by creating healthy, tasty dishes, I really feel that's one of the most important things I can do. Like mm-hmm. if, you know, people will ask me to go to a animal protest or something, and I just am so sensitive to it. I like curl up in a ball for a week afterwards. It's oh, like, no. I, I just can't do it. Right. So it's like my best use of my time to, to give back to the world is mm-hmm. great tasty food. Right. Because if I can make it tastier than any other food that they've ever had, mm-hmm. they have no excuse for wanting to eat meat. Because I assume they're eating meat mostly because they like the taste. Mm-hmm. But if I can make it tastier than that, mm-hmm. No I think some reason. people really do are convinced that they need it. Maybe. Because we grew up saying, okay, you know, you have the food guy pyramid. Yeah, yeah. It says, okay, you need this, 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 and this. And I think that's the biggest fear when people do get the eco um, value of being plant-based right. and they get the animal brutality. Then they, because we've learned so much for so long, what am I going to get all the nutrients and am the I vitamins? Am I going to get the protein, the number that one I question? Need? Yeah, the number one question. So I feel like taking that fear away and 
keeping them in alignment with love by providing yeah. this great tasting food as you do is the key. Yeah. Well, and it's so funny, you know, the protein question is just such a laugh because I, I haven't heard anybody say, where is that horse getting his protein? He's just mm -hmm. eating grass or the gorilla mm -hmm. who's just eating leaves off a tree. Right. Strongest animal pound for pound on earth is the gorilla. Mm -hmm. Nobody's questioning he's getting protein. Right. You know, he's getting plenty of protein from those greens, as is the horse, as is the mm -hmm. zebra, as is the elephant, as is the uh, giraffe and right. the hippo, on and on and on. Most of the large land-based mammals are, ve are are plant eaters. Right, and the green, like you said, greens with every meal yeah. is something that I practice just to make sure I'm getting that chlorophyll, I'm getting that life force energy, those yeah. enzymes and nutrients. And I also think people don't realize they can get protein from fruits and vegetables as well. They that feel time. like, you know, meat equals protein, protein equals meat. But now that we show them like you can be healthy and fit and there is protein yeah. um, and carbohydrates and there's complex carbohydrates and there's so many vitamins and nutrients and minerals that your body needs beyond yeah. just protein and fat like there's so many minerals even people that eat um all the meat in the world that that are we are deficient in yeah. and i feel like i love how you kind of give that knowledge in your cooking classes yeah. and when you teach you not only say this tastes good but right. this is what this is doing for you so yeah, I, congratulations I, i'm sure people are they come to my class often or bored to death about hearing about <laughs> leafy greens because that's what I talk about the most because it's the most magical, right. most nutrient dense food. It's full of uh, it's full of fiber, which we don't get enough of. Mm -hmm. And that's how your gut becomes healthy because you grow your own probiotics. Uh, the more fiber you eat, the more probiotics you have in your own gut, mm -hmm. the better you digest your food. Um, you, you know, they're green, like you say, they have chlorophyll. Uh, which is detoxifying to the body. They've got phytonutrients, phytochemicals, which mm -hmm. fight off disease like cancer. I mean, there is nothing you can do that's going to change your health faster than eating leafy greens, in my opinion. I love it. So what can people find you? Well, um, uh, suncafe.com mm -hmm. is our website for the restaurant. We're in Studio City right by Universal Studios. If mm -hmm. you're a tourist, we're right down the block. Um, uh, our Sun Cafe site is Sun Cafe LA on Instagram and Sun Cafe Organic mm -hmm. on Facebook. My personal Instagram is uh, Vegan Chef Ron. Mm -hmm. And so check those out. And what else? Uh, we do this little heart at the end <laughs> and we toss it out towards the camera. Until next time, get loved up. <laughs>